What's going on, Sumoling? Thank you so much for joining us for another product walkthrough webinar. I am Lindsay, and I am joined by the team over at ClickMinded. You're probably familiar with them, but in case you are not, ClickMinded is a complete SEO training course with real world examples designed to generate relevant site traffic by helping you figure out what search engine users want. You can get it right now as a lifetime deal on AppSumo for just $149. But before we dive in, and I tell you all of the special treats that we have in store for you today, I just wanna tell you a few quick things. Uh, the first is if you have any questions about the deal, about uh, the tool, how to get set up, anything like that, so sorry. Uh, go ahead and leave those questions, <laughs> leave those questions in the Q&A uh, down below the webinar, down below the video, uh, and we will circle back to those questions at the end of the walkthrough. Um, the second thing is uh, we want you to head over to the chat room. First, in the chat room, go ahead and tell us a little bit about your business. Tell us a little bit about uh, why you were interested in ClickMinded, but also keep your eyes out for uh, Andre, who will be giving you uh, some, he's giving out some freebies. Uh, and he and he wants to give them to you. So keep your eye out for some links and things like that over in the chat room. Uh, we're really excited about that today. Uh, the last thing is that um, there's going to be a replay of this available. So you can watch this as many times as you want. Uh, and if you are watching the replay, hello to the future. Uh, I hope it's going well. And that's all for me. Hi, Tommy. How are you doing today? Hey, how are you? I'm I'm loving the pitch. This is this is great. You're, <laughs> Coming up to sling our product. This is awesome. <laughs> I, I love this product. I'm excited every time you guys show up in the shop. And I know that Sumo Lings obviously love you too, or else you wouldn't keep coming back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we, we, have a, we have a very long storied history with AppSumo. When we, well, the very first time we came to AppSumo, it was like, maybe 2012, none of these learning management platforms existed. We were like creating and hacking and slashing this thing for the beginning. No one really knew about AppSumo. And now you guys are big and famous and everyone loves you and we're the, you left us in the dust and we're the little guys that are, uh, that are in your wake now. But yeah, it's fun to come back every year. Yeah, we love having you. I don't think any of us would agree that we left you in the <laughs> but, um, uh, we're excited to have you. And today, Sumo Lings, uh, Tommy's actually going to not just take you on a walkthrough of Quick Minded, but also give you a little lesson. Uh, so we're going to learn some things today as well. Uh, leave your questions in the Q&A box and uh, keep an eye out on that chat room for some freebies. All right, I'm going to pass this over to you. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Lindsay. Really appreciate it. And yeah, for anyone that's here, if you can see me, if you can hear me, uh, go ahead and type in the chat. Let me know that, that you can. So make sure we don't have any video or audio issues. I'd love to hear also where everyone's from. So wherever you're logging in from, go ahead and let us know in the chat. Um, we're gonna do a, give away a couple of freebies today as well. Those will all be in the chat. So make sure you've opened it up and it's uh, you can see it and all that. Okay, we got Michael from uh, Coeur d'Alene ID. Is that, that's not Idaho, is it? It's gonna be somewhere in France, right? Ireland, Corey from Pennsylvania, but in Southern California. Vincent from LA, Michael is from Idaho. Okay, that's, that's not a French sounding town in Idaho. That's interesting. Um, Mito from Mexico, cool. Okay, so uh, I'm going to swap over by screen here really quick and we will do um, a quick walkthrough of sort of how we think about driving more traffic and sales to your site and your business from search engines. And then we'll do a quick overview of the product if you're on the fence and you want to check it out. So I'm gonna go in and share my screen here. And let's see what we got. Okay, swap this over. Oh, it looks like security and okay. Zoom is, let's see here. Hey, Lindsay, uh, real quick, it looks like, um, I'm gonna to have to sign out of Zoom and jump jump back in. Yeah, so I'll be back in one second. Um, if not you don't... the first time. <laughs> okay, if everyone hangs tight, I'll be back in one second. Zoom's asking for an update right now. Zoom, for everybody who doesn't know this, Zoom has been giving him issues since we started doing this uh, 15 minutes ago. So um, if y'all want to go ahead and uh, keep letting us know uh, where, you're, where you're calling in from, 
I also am curious, you know, what are you hoping to get out of Quick Minded? What are you hoping to learn? Um, and why you're interested in, uh, in, in purchasing this. Um, we'd love to hear it. We'd love uh, to get those insights. And then, yeah, keep your eye on the chat where there's going to be some freebies given away. Um, we have Andre on standby. We've got Tommy joining us again. And hey, <laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, great. Sorry about that. <laughs> I let them in on the secret that Zoom has not been your best friend today. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you can see me and hear me, now we can. I got my Zoom problems figured out, and I'll swap over my screen. And there we go. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Sure can. Okay. So now we will get rolling here. Um, so yeah, so just going to do a quick overview of sort of how we like to think about a lot of this stuff. And we'll do a quick product um, overview towards the end. We have a bunch of freebies as well. And if you have any questions at all, you can either save them to the end or uh, you can drop them in the chat now and we'll get to them in just a moment. So click mine at AppSumo, love and tacos. <laughs> We're very excited about. So welcome. Thanks everybody for joining. Just a couple things about me, my name is Tommy Griffith. I've been doing SEO for more than 10 years. I previously managed search engine optimization at PayPal and Airbnb. Uh, now I run ClickMinded, which is a digital marketing training course for entrepreneurs. So uh, really briefly, I wanna just sort of do a high level overview of the sales funnel in the context of digital marketing before we talk about how we like to think about SEO uh, in this course and sort of in, in 2020. Most people are very familiar with the sales funnel, so I'm just gonna take 30 seconds and do this. But if you're unfamiliar, this might be a good refresher. A common mistake that a lot of people make when they get started in digital marketing is that they act weird. <laughs> For whatever reason, people think it's okay to act weird, right? And imagine this, you're approaching someone you don't know, you're coming up to them out of nowhere, and you're asking them to buy your product right away without any context. Doing that is weird. Right. And so the most sex this, the most successful sales funnels usually look like normal human relationships. And this is sort of how we like to think about SEO as well. For whatever reason, many people think this doesn't apply in digital marketing and it's super weird. People think that because you can't see your customers and because uh, it's web traffic behind a screen that you can just change the rules. And this really isn't a good idea. So let's do a brief review of the sales funnel. Um, and sort of how this works. We actually have this as a downloadable graphic. So Andre is going to post a link in the chat right now. So you can grab this and have a copy for yourself if you want. Uh, once you see that link, you can go ahead and grab it and, um, and download it. And just let us know in the chat that you received it. So go ahead and just, and just tell us that you got it. Um, and yeah, Lindsay or Andre, if there's any problems, feel free to interrupt me as we get rolling. So really high level overview with the sales funnel, right? The first thing we start off with, with, is, with is our target persona. Target persona, customer avatar, buyer's journey. These are all kind of the same thing, but we wanna make sure we have a really clear idea of who our user is. And we make sort of like a fictional representation of that person before we even start creating our sales funnel. Next up are traffic sources. This isn't our sales funnel. These are things we pour into our sales funnel. Right, so that could be direct traffic, SEO traffic, paid advertising traffic, social media traffic, maybe link traffic or affiliate traffic, something like that. Then we have our actual funnel, top of the funnel. This is what most people think of when they think of SEO and when they think of traffic in general. In the old school world, the, the, the offline world, this might be you know, your billboard on the side of the highway or your radio advertisements, your Super Bowl ad commercial, something like that. In the internet world, this might be a blog post or a YouTube video or a podcast, something like that. Next up is the middle funnel. So in the relationship, right, the top, if, you, if it's a regular human relationship, top of funnel is like, hey, nice to meet you. My name's Tommy. What do you do? Middle funnel is, hey, this was great talking to you. Let me get your phone number. Let's go out for coffee sometime, something like that. We're getting a little bit more developed in the relationship. In digital marketing, this might be a lead magnet where you give something of value in exchange for an email address, maybe an opt-in, like a webinar, hint, hint, what you're on right now, right? Or like a, a low priced offer or sometimes called a tripwire, a product that's usually like five or $10 uh, that sort of gets the user more familiar with you as a business. 
And then finally, it's the bottom funnel. A lot of you know this already. This is your core offer. This is the primary thing that you do. This is the primary thing that your business sells. We'll dive more into this in a little bit. And finally, retention. This is one that a lot of people sort of forget about. Customer acquisition is really hard. And when you finally get that customer, a lot of people forget that you can continue to provide value and monetize your users again and again. It's actually a lot easier to sell customers a second, third, and fourth time, right? So retention is all the things we do to increase the customer lifetime value after they've already purchased, right? Maybe it's uh, an annual event that you invite them to. Maybe it's an ongoing subscription product, or maybe it's a repeat purchase, a cross-sell or upsell, something like that. A lot of people forget that it's, you're actually much better off uh, reselling to your current customers than you are to find, find new customers. Other things outside the sales funnel are return paths. Uh, these are basically things we can do to bring users back into the funnel when they fall out. The best example of this one would be uh, that abandoned cart email that you sometimes get. You add a product to your cart, you're about to check out, and then the doorbell rings or the phone rings and you never come back. You, maybe you get an email 30 minutes later saying, hey, you forgot to check out, here's $5 off. So that's a return path. Uh, measurement and tracking is vital to all of this. You have to have really good measurement and tracking throughout your entire funnel to make sure this is working. And experimentation and optimization are all the things we do to move users down each step of the funnel. Once we've done all these things, we have Susie, the, the loyal customer, right? So that's just a brief overview of the sales funnel. Make sure we're all on the same page before we start talking about the actual search framework. Like I said, a lot of you sumo links that are already uh, very well versed in digital marketing things, you probably are well aware, but I want to make sure we're all sort of um, speaking the same language here. So we gave that, you, gave that to you as a downloadable. You can have that one. Um, and just keep this in mind when we talk about the search framework, which is what we'll be doing next. So really high level overview of that, the rule of thumb is don't be weird. Uh, you're not allowed to immediately start sending traffic to your bottom funnel. That's weird. Imagine doing that in the real world. It's just a little strange. Treat customers who just entered your sales funnel like normal people that you just met. This actually happened to me. This is why I like to talk about it so much. Have you ever met an insurance salesman at a party? It's terrible. <laughs> it's absolutely terrible. Don't be that guy. I, it's happened to me. I was at a party. I met this insurance salesman. And within one minute, he's like, all right, what are you doing tomorrow? Let's get a coffee. Let's talk about your financial situation. And it's just like, dude, stop. This is weird. I don't like that. You would feel very awkward about that in, in real life. But for whatever reason, internet marketers think that that's okay on the internet. And it's not. It, you're, you're much better off treating your traffic like a regular human relationship. And you can use SEO to achieve goals at any stage of the funnel that we just talked about. So we'll dive into this in just a moment. So we've designed this framework that can help you do that. We're going to talk about that next. So we call this the search framework and it's a pretty simple five step process you can use for any customer at any stage of the funnel in the context of search engine optimization. So in order to learn this framework, we're going to do an example. Let's look at a website that sells vintage video games and consoles. So, you know, I'm a giant nerd. I don't know if there's any other nerds on the chat, but if you played any Nintendo or Super Nintendo in the 90s, actually let me know in the chat right now if you were a big retro video game person like I was. I was obsessed with my Sega Genesis. My brother was a Super Nintendo guy. And so let's say we were creating a new business called retroaddicts.com and we were specializing in vintage video games and consoles, right? We were selling old school Nintendos and Super Nintendos and Sega Genesis and things like that. Maybe games and consoles and t-shirts and whatever it is. So here's that five-step framework we were talking about. We're gonna dive into each of these next. The target persona, the digital asset, the digital medium, optimizing, and then the nudge. So let's look at this framework uh, step number one, the target persona. Who's the user? What are they searching for? And why are they searching for it? Right? Who are they? What are they looking for? And what stage of the funnel are they in? So our user persona here is going to be Nick 90s. Look at this guy, Nick 90s. He's a 31 year old accountant. This is a, this guy is just pure, he's got retro written all over him. Uh, he lives in the US. He's a hardcore 90s kid. So we're talking, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Smashing Pumpkins, Maybe he asked for a Game Boy on Christmas and he wants to experience some of the stuff that he loved while he was growing up. He's top of funnel. Now you wanna be doing this for your business at, at each stage as well. You wanna be creating a customer avatar that represents your customer's wants and needs. So we're retroaddicts.com and we've created Nick 90s as our customer avatar. And we can take a look based on what he wants at search volume. 
So we cover this uh, often in the course. We, we can use third-party tools to figure out what keywords are being searched for and, uh, and sort of what the monthly search volume is on those. Now, in the context of the sales funnel, this is really important. We can segment this up and divide this up um, as we need to. So we can cut these up into top, middle, and bottom funnel. So if I'm Nick 90s and I'm going to Google, maybe I'm typing in best retro video games or NES versus SNES, that might be top of funnel type keywords. Middle funnel, it's like, okay, I kind of know what I want. I'm getting closer to buying. That might be something like Double Dragon 2 Review or Mario versus Double Dragon. Who played Double Dragon, by the way? I love that game. I have spent way too many hours playing that game. And then bottom funnel might be something like Amazon, Double Dragon, Nintendo Entertainment System right? Or Double Dragon, Nintendo Entertainment System, Amazon coupon code. This is like my credit card's out. I'm ready to go. I'm five seconds away from purchasing. So we can do this when we look at different search volumes. Cool. So we've got the target persona. Next up is the digital asset and the digital medium. So what type of content uh, will we give the user and what platform will it live on? Are the basic ideas here. So first let's talk about digital asset. What will you offer to those users and where will it live? So for most people, your digital asset is going to be a page on your site and that's fine. It could be a page or a blog post or something like that. But the point here in this day and age is that it doesn't have to, right? So it could be a blog post for a lot of you. It will, but it, but it could also be a forum response. It could be a social media post or a video or a digital tool. It could be an image or review, a webinar, a product demo, or a listing page. There's a lot of different assets you can use these days. The next step is the medium. How are you going to distribute that asset, right? So if, again, for most people, it's probably going to be your site, but the point here is that it doesn't have to be your site, right? It could live on YouTube. It could live on Google Places or Yelp, Amazon, Quora, Pinterest, or the App Store, right? There's a lot of different opportunities for you here. We cover all of this, right? And so uh, the digital asset and the digital medium in this case is going to be a blog post on our site, pretty standard. Maybe we'll make a, a post called the 20 best retro video games that are still awesome 30 years later. And the medium will be Google, right? So we want to rank for best retro video games on Google. So we have our customer avatar. We know the asset's going to be a post on our site. And the medium that we're going to use is Google SEO traffic, right? So we've got those three down. Next up is optimization, right? Are, all, are your assets and the medium optimized for maximum results? This is going to vary uh, for every asset and every medium that you use have you fully optimized the assets in order to get the results you want, right? So if you're optimizing for Google, that's going to be different than optimizing for YouTube, which is going to be different than optimizing for the App Store, which is going to be different than optimizing for Pinterest. Every one of these search engines has different criteria that you can optimize for, right? And so we're not going to go through everything uh, you need to do to optimize. That's, that's the entire context of the course, right? But right, have you done your keyword research? Have you done on-page optimization? Have you done technical optimization? Have you done your link building? All the things you need to do to optimize. And finally, the last and the arguably the most important step of this framework is the nudge. This is the single clear, look at these little monkeys, the single clear next step that you want the user to take. It is insane to me how many people get this wrong. They do their keyword research. They put a ton of time and effort into finding their customer avatar. They write really, really good content that's based on keyword research. And then they don't nudge the user. So everything you create, especially for the top of funnel, needs to have a single clear call to action to move the user down to the next stage of the funnel. So are you pushing your users to the next logical step in the funnel? If, if it's top of funnel, right, maybe you want to be having them view another post or enter their email address, something like that. But people always seem to get this one wrong, right? So top of funnel would be view more content or maybe follow us on social media. Middle funnel might be enter your email or buy this low dollar offer or tripwire or something like that. And then bottom funnel is like, hey, this is our core offering, sign up now, right? But, but you need to be keeping that in mind. Once you've uh, created your content for that specific stage in the funnel, you need to be asking your users to take the next step to get a little bit closer to you as a business, make them move closer and closer to that purchase. Right, so in this particular case on retroaddicts.com, we're targeting Nick 90s. We've created this post called the 20 best retro video games that are still awesome 30 years later. We, we optimized it, we got a ranking on Google, it's generating traffic. Now we need to figure out our nudge. Do we want Nick 90s to view another post? Maybe he needs to view another post like where to buy vintage video games. Or maybe we want him to enter his email, right? Enter your email to win a Mario t-shirt. Or maybe if there was a particular social channel that we were investing in, we'd say, hey, like us on Facebook follow us on Instagram, whatever is important to your business. So that's it. That's the five-step framework that we use. It, it's fairly simple. 
but you can use it for every type of customer avatar at every stage of the funnel. Now, this is the other thing that a lot of people get wrong is they think they only need to do this one time. That's incorrect. You actually have to do this at every single stage of the funnel. So we just went through those five steps. That was only for the top of funnel. We would actually restart the entire process for the middle funnel, restart the entire process for the bottom funnel as well. All right. So this example was top of funnel using Google, but it can be applied to each stage of the funnel and any platform with a search engine. Just a couple of other examples of metrics you can use, right? So top of funnel might be your, your goals and your metrics might be acquiring new visitors by pixeling them, maybe segmenting those visitors by interest or just overall branding for your business. Middle of funnel goals might be driving visitors back to the site or converting those visitors into leads by asking them to enter an email address. Bottom funnel might be converting leads into customers or maximizing your cart value, getting some upsells and cross sells and additional uh, purchases right, right at the last moment. And then retention is maximizing customer lifetime value, maybe reducing refunds and churn if you're a monthly recurring product or generating referrals overall, having them invite their friends, something like that. Cool, so that was just one lecture of our product and I just wanna do a little overview here of what, uh, what you get when you sign up for ClickMinded. So I'm just gonna swap over my screen here and if you can still see the screen, let me know in the chat. And we can still see it, yeah? <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Um, okay, cool, so we will, um, so, so let me give you a, a little overview here of what this looks like. So when you sign up, um, this is what it will look like. This is our, our dashboard. And so um, right now at the AppSumo deal, we have three courses, our SEO course, our sales funnel course, and our SOP library. We'll dive into all these in just a moment. We also have a bunch of bonuses. So we have a local SEO mini course, our YouTube SEO mini course, an Amazon SEO mini course, our Pinterest SEO mini course, and a Shopify SEO mini course. So if any of these channels were interesting to you at some point, we have specific courses dedicated to those. So in the actual SEO course, this is sort of what it looks like. Each one of these um, lectures are broken up into specific sections. They're kind of easy to jump in and out of. Some people say, hey, look, I'm an on-page optimization pro. I just need help with link building and off-page optimization, you can skip stuff as you need to. Uh, they're really deep. I mean, this is, uh, <laughs> and we, we went really big on this and it's a monstrosity. We're very excited about it, put a lot of love into it and everything was updated um, just in the last few weeks. So that's the SEO course, just jumping over into the sales funnel course. This is one of the bonuses we're doing as well. This is, all, even though I don't teach this one, I personally teach the SEO course, but my favorite course is our sales funnel course. It's taught by Jim Huffman. He's a former growth mentor at Techstars, a startup accelerator. This is such a great one. Um, you could also call this kind of digital marketing 101. If you're brand new and you have a bunch of questions about digital marketing, you're too embarrassed to ask. You should never be too embarrassed to ask, but if you are, this one is, is, is so helpful. Um, Jim is absolutely incredible. Really, really good one. And then our SOP library, I'm gonna dig into this one a little bit more in just a moment. I'll skip this one for now. Um, our local SEO mini course is an example of kind of what the local one is. We break it. It's so important for some businesses that we just break out these ones because they're uh, more generally more important for some users. But just to show, show you sort of what it looks like. So here's uh, one of the first lectures in the SEO course. So they're video courses. You can play them here. You can sort of modify them. Look at that clown. Who's that guy? You can, you, can, you can change the quality and the speed as well. If you're neurotic like me and you like to watch everything at 1.5x because uh, you're a miserable person and you don't want to waste time, you, you can do that. It turns it, it turns it into like Alvin in the chipmunks mode, so you have to be cool with that. But if you're fine with that, that's fine. All of the slides that you're watching are viewable here. Um, right? You can also download them. Right, So you can download them. A lot of people like to print out our slides and take notes, like physically take notes, which is cool. That's what I like to do as well. And then we do these um, quick little quizzes just at the end of each one to make sure you're on the right track. Um, and it's just, they're very brief, but they're usually at the end of each lecture. And they're just to make sure you're not going insane and you're getting it right. Um, and then you can sort of complete them and continue to jump into each one of these lectures. So it's two courses, our SEO course and the um, sales funnel course, along with our SOP library. You can sort of jump through them. Uh, we have, you can jump into all of the course curriculum here as well. Up in the top and try to see, okay, actually I wanna skip that one and jump into this one, that's totally fine. Now, there's a, there's a couple of other things too I want to talk about uh, that are, it's hard to convey in the AppSumo page. And so I just wanna go over this because we keep getting feedback that this is the best part of the deal, which is our SOP library. 
Um, and so we'll, we'll, we're going to, um, yeah, let me just swap over to, to what some of these look like. We're going to drop a couple of these into the chat for you here in just a moment. Andre, if you could hold off for one second, we'll just want to go over a couple of these. See, SOPs, right? SOP stands for standard operating procedure. Um, it's just like a fancy way to say a very comprehensive checklist. And over the years, I mean, we're on year nine now with ClickMinded. Over the years, we just found that people saying, this is great, but how do I get started? And the SOPs are designed to solve that. So they're very comprehensive checklists that actually show you step-by-step step how to do the thing you're doing. So this is a more, you know, sort of basic example of, okay, here's exactly how to install the Facebook pixel on your site, right? And so this, is a, a, this, this one is an eight-page walkthrough, a very comprehensive walkthrough on everything you need to do to actually install um, the Facebook pixel on a site. And so we're going to give away a couple of these for, for free in just a moment. You can see what they look like, but these are brandable. You can use these for clients. You can use them for yourself. We take requests to create new ones. Um, and that's sort of how it looks, what it looks like on the platform side. I'm just gonna pull up these slides again one more time, and then we can switch over to Q&A. Right, so yeah, ClickMoney is designed to teach you how to use this framework that we just talked about for more organic traffic and sales from search engines as quickly as possible. So here's how you can benefit from this framework today. Um, everything we just talked about. If you're an entrepreneur, you can, can very consistently get more qualified traffic and sales for your business. Uh, you can train your team to run all of your SEO in-house. We get a ton of people using us, using us for in-house training. Consultants or agencies, you can generate massive results for clients and start charging more or you can develop a repeatable and scalable process that you can easily delegate to your team if you're trying to free up your own time. If you're an in-house marketer, you're working in marketing for someone else, you can maybe get a raise or a promotion uh, to lead your company's SEO strategy. Or if you're applying for jobs, I've seen a number of people, instead of applying the normal way, they create an SEO strategy and use that as their application. This really works, this is a great idea. So you can impress potential employers if you're a job candidate looking for work. So if you're ready to take SEO seriously, here's the fastest way to get started uh, that we recommend. The first up step is to learn the fundamentals, right? So click-minded SEO course, this is a, uh, the, <laughs> just jamming everything onto that slide, huh? Uh, we don't even have everything on there. I'm not gonna go over all those things, but let's talk about what you'll learn. You'll learn the exact process to find massive keyword opportunities, how to perfectly optimize content for any search engine, not just Google, building white hat links at scale, and then over the shoulder walkthroughs every step of the way. Next step is to apply it to other channels, right? So it's not just Google, right? We have our local SEO mini course. We have our Shopify SEO mini course, a YouTube SEO mini course, Pinterest SEO mini course, and our Amazon SEO mini course. All of these are included for Sumo links. And then the third step is to implement immediately. So this is what the click-minded SOP library is for. Like I mentioned before, SOP stands for standard operating procedure. It's a fancy way to say comprehensive checklist. And this is for the people who say, okay, these lectures are great, but how do I actually do this? How do I actually implement everything? So we call our SOP library this comprehensive archive of step-by-step -step instructions on how to execute these extremely specific digital marketing tasks. So we're gonna drop a couple of them into the chat now. Um, the first one is the SEO audit SOP. Andre, if you wanna drop that in. Uh, once you get it, Guys, you can, uh, you can uh, click the link and then just let us know in the chat that you received it. So you will, uh, you'll get the SOP. You can come up to file and click make a copy. And you can actually have that copy for yourself. Once you have that copy for yourself, uh, let, just let us know that you got it. So here's how to do a complete page level SEO audit. And we always start these things off. We usually have the, the date it was last updated and then the execution time, how long it'll take to do. And then we do the kind of who, what, where, when, why at the top. All right, so what's the goal? Okay, the goal is to execute a comprehensive SEO audit on any web page. What's the ideal outcome? The end user will receive a comprehensive audit and let them know what state the web page is in. Why is this done? Where is this done? When is this done? Who does this? So the who, what, where, when, why is always here. And we tell you exactly what you need to do to get started. Okay, go to file, click make a copy. File, make a copy. Right, and you can kind of go in and sort of check these things off as you go along. So sort of check things off as you do them. Um, environment setup, all the extensions and plugins that you need in order to get this done. Any additional worksheets are included as links and we sort of keep these things up to date. This one's a massive one, 19 pages. Um, absolutely massive, it's on us. The onus is on us to make sure it's the most efficient process possible. We keep it up to date. And when you have this, it, it's all you. You can go in, 
you can delete our logo, right? Uh, put your own logo on there. It's totally fine. Um, you know, take all the credit for it. We do the work, you get the credit and you can send it over to clients and that is absolutely fine. So that is our, SO, that is our SEO, page level SEO audit SOP. Uh, and you can have that one for free. Next up, we have another one, uh, performing a resource page link building outreach campaign. So this is our next SOP. We're gonna drop this into the chat for you in just a moment here. And we kind of do the same thing. So we have how long it takes and when it was last updated, um, the who, what, where, when, why. So what's the goal? Establish a process that will help you easily reach out to resource pages and acquire quality backlinks through them. What's the ideal outcome, right? Uh, getting a bunch of links from resource pages. Any prerequisites, why it's important, where it's done, when it's done, who does this, um, all of that is included. And then it's kind of the same thing, getting started. Go up to file and click make a copy. So you go up to file, click make a copy. And as you do that, you can go along. By the way, when you get this one, go up to file, click make a copy and just let us know in the chat that you received it. And we go through the same process, everything you need to do. This one's 23 pages. <laughs> 23 pages. Uh, again, you can swap out our logo, put your own logo on it, send it over to clients, tell them you wrote it yourself. That, <laughs> and that's the, you're going to do it anyways. So we just let you do it. Um, so that's part of our SOP library. This one, this is a product. We just, we wanted this for ourselves. We were making so many SOPs in our own business. We wanted this for ourselves. Then we emailed our users and we said, Hey, would you like this? And everyone was screaming for it, just beating down the door uh, in order to get this thing. So we're very proud of this one. We created it for ourselves and it turns out everyone else wanted it. Um, cool. So yeah, let us know if you got that second SOP. I'm just going to swap over and we'll switch over to Q and A here in just a minute. Uh, just a couple other things. Yeah, the bonus one, I talked about this one. So we're including a bonus course here, building a powerful sales funnel for your SEO traffic. So our click-minded sales funnel course, at the very beginning, we talked about sales funnel. If you haven't done that, if you haven't created a customer avatar and you're unsure of what your sales funnel looks like, this is the course for you. It covers a ton of different topics. I'm not gonna go over all of those. I'm gonna talk about what you get out of it. You're gonna learn how to create powerful sales funnels from scratch that convert. Uh, there's dozens of case studies and tactics that work for startups up to fortune 500 companies over the shoulder campaign walkthroughs for the top middle and bottom funnel at click minded our, our flagship course is our seo course that's sort of how we got started um, and even though i teach it and i should be the most proud of it i actually love jim's course more than mine jim's absolutely incredible it's really really good it's a great way to solidify um, your sales funnel all right let's talk turkey Let's talk shop. Let's talk business here, right? So if you go to clickminded.com right now, this is the price you're going to pay for these products. Our SEO course is $997. Our sales funnel course is $997. And our SOP library is $97 a month. So three months access to that is $291. All in, that's $2,285. And we are super proud to be able to offer it at this price. This is a great value. But look, I pulled, up, <laughs> I pulled up the negotiation footage. This is AppSumo on the left and ClickMinded on the right. And this is how it goes every year. This is how it goes every single year. These guys come up to us, we say, no, we can't do that, no, we can't do that. And they strangle us for you <laughs> Sumo links. So um, all in, right, $2,285, and we're very proud to be able to offer it at this price. By some act of God, AppSumo beats us up and gets us to do it at Sumo Ling level pricing. So yes, we are doing it for an absurd, uh, obscene price that is offensive. And all my friends who also run businesses tell me I'm an idiot every single year for doing this. So if you're ready to enroll, we would love to have you. We're going to post a link to the deal page right now in the chat. So go ahead and click that if you want to take it. And if not, that's fine too. Uh, but we would love to have you enroll. Click uh, AppSumo. The reason why this partnership is so awesome, uh, the, the, the story is actually kind of funny, but we've been with AppSumo so long, about one third of click-minded users are Sumo links, are from AppSumo. Um, and since we've been sort of together since the beginning, I, I, I spoke at SumoCon a couple of years ago and um, friends with some of the, all the early folks from AppSumo and uh, AppSumo is kind of part of, our, part of our history now. So it's just a lot of fun to do this every single year. Questions we always get before we switch over to Q&A. So when was the course last updated? It was updated uh, just a few weeks ago, July, 2020. How often do you update it whenever necessary? We usually do a couple small mini updates throughout the year and then usually a massive overhaul once a year. Um, how long do I get access? You get unlimited lifetime access and free updates for life to the courses. We have users that enrolled in an AppSumo deal in 2012 that are still getting all the free updates. 
Do you offer a certification? Yes, we do. If you finish the course and pass the final exam with an 80% or higher, you'll earn a certification. Um, you can take that test as many times as you want. How does the SOP library work? So this is gonna be three months access to the SOP library, uh, but your billing information is not kept on file. You absolutely can re-enroll if you want to, but you're not gonna be sort of charged later on. We don't have your billing information on file. You have to actually sign up again. We think a lot of you will sign up again, but you won't be charged um, once it ends. This license, the, the deal is for one person. So every license is good for one person. And if you have questions during the course, you absolutely can uh, message us or contact me or email me specifically. Um, with any questions, any, any SEO questions. We actually have a chat widget at the bottom. I forgot to go over that. The chat widget at the bottom of every lecture um, and those messages will go directly to me and the team. So i um, happy to, to help you out along the way. Oh, okay, that was a lot. So I'm gonna swap over my screen now again. And uh, I am, I think we can go into Q and A if we want to. How do I do this? I'm like a grandpa here. I can't figure it out. There we go. Um, Cool. All right, let's do the Q&A. Sumalings, this is your moment. You can leave your questions. Uh, I can neither confirm nor deny that that was real footage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's real, it's real. I hate the comment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's smart, that's smart. Plead, plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so. We have a uh, first question. Do you think that a freelance webmaster with 10 years of experience in WordPress, but little skills, only technical on-site, on-page and SEO could begin selling also SEO consultancy after studying only your course? That's a, yes, cool. that's a great question. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. And, and, and the answer to that one is yes. And I will, I will, I'm not going to BS you on this. I will absolutely tell you when you should and should not sign up. In fact, we get, I get, a, a, if you see in the comments, a lot of people get really angry, angry at me every year when I tell them not to sign up. And this is actually one of the lectures we teach. It's all, it's, it's all about how being really specific about your customer avatar and then relentlessly telling people that aren't your customer avatar is actually a really good idea. It reduces your customer support tickets. It reduces your bad reviews. And so when people aren't a good fit, I go out of my way to say, please don't sign up. And for whatever reason, people get really grumpy about, about that. But for this one, I'm gonna tell you, yes, you're a great candidate for this. So there's two types of people that are, that, are, um, that are great fits for this that we didn't really cover. One is, hey, I'm a web designer or I'm running this particular type of agency and I wanna up some more services. A lot of our customers are um, consultants and agencies that they just don't feel confident. They know how to do SEO a little bit, but they don't feel confident enough to sell it. And uh, ClickMoney is fantastic for this because it's a really good index of all the questions that are going to come up from your clients, from your customers, right? And uh, and it sort of gives them the confidence to be able to sell these these new services. We do get a lot of requests like, "Hey, can you do lectures on how to price services and how to find clients and all that?" We don't have anything like that. So this is not a how to start an agency course but we do have a number of clients that started selling um, Facebook ad services or um, SEO services after taking one of our courses because they sort of got the confidence. The other type of avatar that we didn't really cover is people who they still, they go through the course and they, they still want to hire an agency or a consultancy. Maybe they're a small to medium sized business owner and they still want to hire a consultancy or an agency, but they go through the course so that they can hire better so that they don't get sort of like tricked, so they don't get oversold things. And so those are the two types of um, entrepreneur and consultancy clients we have. People that wanna start selling these services and people who want to sort of use the product to vet people who are, they're buying those services from. And both of those are good candidates. So I would say yes, uh, ClickBinded is a, would be a, a good option for you there. Excellent, thank you. Um, in that vein, kind of going with use cases, is there a specific use case in ClickMinded that would be covered for affiliate marketing parts? So no, if you're, I mean, we cover search engine optimization. This is a good question. We cover search engine optimization. A lot of affiliates are going to focus on search engine optimization. If you specifically want to understand search engine optimization, yes, you should be signing up. If you want to be learning about how to be an affiliate, I wouldn't recommend signing up. We don't specifically cover affiliate topics, uh, but anything that an affiliate would do from an SEO perspective is, is in there. But if, you're, if your number one goal is, I want to create an affiliate site from scratch, tell me everything I need to know, this isn't the product for you. 
Excellent. Well, thank you. All right. Um, I would like to know if Tommy can highlight the main key difference of SEO application on how to make it relevant for B2B business or B2C e-commerce. Yeah, so um, that's a very broad question. Uh, I, I don't love that question. I mean, the, the, the sort of process that you go through to how do I optimize this page for a search engine and for the end user is applicable to whatever the, 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 the business is. Where the differences are, it's sort of your middle funnel, right? Like if you're selling a, a, a $9 product B2C, uh, that you're gonna do things very differently than if you're selling a $150,000 enterprise product, right? Like get an email versus get a phone call versus sign up now. So um, I, I wouldn't, we don't make a lot of those differentiations, no. You're gonna have to make those on your own we, what we really focus on is the mechanics of how do I get my stuff ranking at the top of Google and other search engines. All right, thank you. Um, the, there's a second question of that. As SEO trends change often, um, is there anything like within ClickMinded that lets them know that they're seeing the latest SEO changes uh, in the module? So, I mean, we, we send out notifications when there's updates. Um, we also take requests for when you want updates, but the, the basic, the basic idea here is when something's big enough to merit a change, we make the change update it and we notify everyone and, and that there's a number of users we have that sign up for that reason. They don't want to have to stay um, up to date on it. The other thing, the reason why this is confusing and I'm going to, I don't want to go on too much of a rant here, but we're very, very grumpy old men about and women about how the digital marketing media industry works. I'm, yes, there are algorithm updates that are sometimes worth looking at, but unfortunately a number of blogs that I won't name get everyone super like anxious and nervous about every single little change. And actually you can ignore most of it. There's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot of changes where blogs I won't name sort of do this clickbaity kind of thing where they convince you you're missing out. And the vast majority of people don't need to be focused on it. So yes, we will update when it's necessary, but the vast majority of the industry is actually really gross about how they scare people into thinking they're missing something. It's very tabloidish. It's very clickbaity. And uh, we, yes, we do those updates. You'll get a notification from us, but they actually happen less than you think. Thank you so much for that. The person who's uh, <laughs> asking these questions says that this advice has been very useful and, and really people in the comments or are, are in the chat are really responding uh, to everything that you've been saying. Uh, we Wait. have a wow, wow, wow. I've bought it. I did not realize that it did all of this. Um, <laughs> we're very excited. Um, and a few people have purchased Sumolings. We are coming to the end of the questions that we have in this Q&A box. So if you want to send in any questions to get answered right now, uh, you can do that. Just put them in the Q&A. Um, all right. So one, uh, I don't know if this is a secret or not. I don't know the answer to it, but how long will ClickMinded be available on AppSumo? Yeah. So I think that one depends. Every year it sort of depends. Um, I mean, we are like some years it's been a week. Some years it's been a couple weeks. It's never more than a month. Um, but though I think the one thing, and this is another point where AppSumo breaks down the door and twists our arm and smashes my head into the wall. Our regular refund period at ClickBind is 14 days, um, which we're happy to do. AppSumo is 60. And so this is a, yet another exception that we make. So you, you, if you're sort of uncomfortable with it or you want to try it later, um, you, you get a much longer, much longer refund period with AppSumo. So, so yet another way that AppSumo is fighting for you, Sumo Link. So please give them some love when you get a chance. But uh, I don't, I'm not sure exactly when this deal will end, but the refund window is absolutely ridiculous. So if you're unsure and you want to take it, you have a, a very liberal um, refund window. And if it's not for you, then that's fine too. Amazing. Um, <laughs> he's lying, by the way. We don't twist his arm at all. None of this happened. I have, there's <laughs> blood, there was blood coming out of my eyes and ears. It's ridiculous. Every year, every year they get me. <laughs> Fully a lie. Um, all right, so this strategy of course work for every language people are doing searches for uh, in like Spanish, German, French, etc. Yeah, it's a great question. Really good question. So we do not, I do not speak any other languages and uh, the other instructors are all, it's all taught in English. Um, the courses are all applicable to any language. So of course you're going to need to listen and understand 
English in order to consume it, but you can absolutely apply this to any language. Um, and so the, the, the one thing to, to consider though is sort of the ecosystem of digital marketing. So I will say that some of the Eastern digital ecosystems are not as good of a fit. So any country where um, kind of Google and YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp are the primary um, sort of networks, then you're good to go. If you're on the Eastern side, like um, in Japan, right? Japan's actually not a great example, but in China, right, with Baidu um, or Korea with Naver, right, and Dom. Um, Russia, Russia's about a split with Yandex, like 50-50 um, Yandex and Google. So if you're in, if you're optimizing for China, Korea, maybe parts of Japan, maybe parts of Russia, this might not be as good of a fit. Um, but for anyone else, you should be good to go. This is applicable to any, any language that's sort of in the, the Google and Western internet um, platform application uh, ecosystem. Awesome, thank you. Um, our friend over in Idaho asks, um, one, he's in, he's totally sold, but right. follow up question. Um, in my SEO past, so about five years ago, I would purchase relevant expired domains and rebuild them for their DA slash PA authority for backlinks. It was a bit of a trick to get a PBN set up correctly, <laughs> but worked extremely well. Are these strategies still relevant in today's SEO environment? This is, I mean, this is, so Michael, I see that question. This, you're definitely on the advanced side of this one for sure. If you want to send, send us an email, hello at clickminded.com, we can talk about that one more. Cool. Love it. I didn't understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's, uh, we're, he, Michael's swimming in the deep end on that one. I'm happy to chat more though. Send us an email. Amazing. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know if you could tell that I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> um, da, da, da. All right. From your perspective, don't you think the opportunity to rank really well is way higher in a Western language that is not English? Yes, it's a really good. It's a really good point. I actually taught. Uh, I taught a digital marketing course at a university for four years as an elective, and there was a number of international students. And, that, and the 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 point of the course was actually to get a site up, live ranking, indexing Google, generating traffic, create an email list. It was a fun fun thing to teach. But I I encourage everyone whose English whose language uh, who was speaking English as a second language. I encourage all of them to actually create a site in their native language because there are generally more opportunities. It's less competitive in non-English markets. Now there's a ton of exceptions here. I don't want to paint with too broad of a brush. You need to think about, you know, like purchasing power of the user and sometimes the country's gross domestic product and things like that. And you know, um, how easy is it to do online payments? There's a ton of like exceptions and things to think about. But yeah, in general, English is the most competitive language. So um, if you have an opportunity where the market size is like big enough and growing and it looks less competitive, I highly recommend looking at, you know, other languages, Spanish, Portuguese, um, you know, Italian, right? Maybe Bahasa, Indonesian, based on what you're doing. It just, just sort of depends on, on what your business is. Awesome. All right. This is the last question that I have here. Um, can you enlighten the SOP part if it follows down like the mini SEO course, like for Shopify, Google by business, et cetera? Yeah, so the way to think about the, the SOP library is it's not a course. It's an index of checklists. And so the courses are like, okay, the, this is the high level overview. This is sort of the theoretical. This is the um, take me through everything. And then the SOPs are, this is exactly how to do the thing, right? This is the most updated screenshots of the user interface. This is the file you could send to staff. This is the file you could send to a virtual assistant or your team. This is the file you could put your own logo on and then say, Hey, client, do these things on your site. And then, and then we'll get back to you. Right? So it's the actual dirty work. Um, and it's the actual thing that you need to, um, to actually start seeing results. So it was just something we got very grumpy about in looking at other, other courses is they just talk about the theory and then they don't actually show you exactly step-by-step step how to do it. For a lot of people, we find these things really funny because there's a segment of people that are like, they're sort of bored by the SOP library. And then there's another segment of people that are just like raving, rabid, insanely obsessed with the SOP library because it's how to actually do the work. 
It's how to actually slog through the tough stuff. And so some people uh, it really resonates with, but the way to think about it is, is an index of checklists that help you actually implement what you're learning. Amazing. Um, everybody is uh, saying thank you and they can't wait to start the course and we've got some star eyed emojis. People are. <laughs> um, all right. And those are all the questions that we have. So I'm gonna go ahead and close us out. Sumo links. If you have not already at sumo.com slash click minded. You can go ahead and uh, re redeem your lifetime deal. It is super discounted as we went over. Uh, it's only $149 in our store. And uh, as it was pointed out, it is uh, backed by AppSumo's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> wonderful, for, wonderful for everyone except us, but yeah, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful for Sumo Link. Wonderful um, for Sumo Link, yes. <laughs> so uh, go ahead, get started, look around uh, and see how it works for you, see what it teaches you. Uh, I believe that they are in store for a whole lot uh, based on what we got today. Uh, so thank you for the Sumo Links. If you have any more questions, uh, you can of course leave them on the deal page. They also drop that email address, which was hello at clickminded.com. You can go ahead and reach out there. Uh, and of course, we would love to know how this is working out for you. Uh, if you say a nice enough, a nice good things, we might bring them back next year. Um, and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, no, but, uh, can't take the beatings. No more beatings. <laughs> But please do let us know in the comments uh, how this is working out for you. It sounds like people are loving it. So uh, we'd love to hear that. Uh, thank you so much, Tommy, uh, for hanging out with us today. Thank you, Andre, for all of your work in the chat. And Sumo Lings, uh, thank you for hanging out too. Thanks a lot, Lindsay. Appreciate it. Awesome. Have a good one.